I just want to tell Noor that um, we don't use Hagar. Okay, so we never imagined that um, we'd be standing here talking about jewelry because I thought that, sorry, I thought that we'd be on an island where I'd be tanning and Tanya would be selling coconuts, but that didn't happen. We found ourselves steered towards jewelry. Whoops, sorry guys, I'm a little nervous. Um, it was never imposed on us by our father because um, he let us do whatever we needed to do to get to this point. Maybe it was manipulative, but that's what happened. And um, now we are the fourth generation jewelers, and our brand is L'Atelier Nobar. This is my sister, Tanya, and um, we are business partners, best friends. You'll never find one without the other. <laughs> and having said that, we also fight a great deal. It's very difficult working with your sister. Okay, so it all started with my great-grandfather um, in, well, it's been since 1881, and it's been passed down from, our par from my father to his father, to, so it's been in the family. Uh, so we've always been inspired by jewelry. It's always been around us. We've always uh, gone with my father to different places to buy stones. Thank you again, Noor, for introducing the jewelry business, going to India. Uh, finding stones, meeting the people, meeting the artisans. So it is a mission, and every piece of jewelry has a lot of thought into it, and very detailed. So what is L'Atelier Nobar? We opened in January 2011. Basically, what makes us different from other jewelers? Our store is a contemporary jewelry store where the workshop is exposed within the, within the space. So working with my father and with other jewelers, we realized that the workshop is always, uh, always hidden. It's like a secret. The clients, no one can go and see the workshop. They have all these secret tricks that they don't want to teach you. Um, it, so it's, it's very hard to get in and penetrate the market. So we decided together, well, why don't we break down these walls, literally break them down. And we glassed it in, explained the whole process. Uh, and the point of this is basically we wanted everyone to be part of the whole process of designing the piece of item, whether it's from something on display that you can find in, in our store, or if it's uh, giving it your, your own personal style, or if it's something that you can create from scratch uh, together with our help, of course. So the retail gallery is where uh, you can see in the picture where the, the, the workshop is exposed. Again, you explain the process. Uh, we, we then, at the same time, we also have an exhi exhibition space. The place is all white, like a blank canvas. We, we encourage uh, artists, uh, design in all form, whether it's a furniture designer or a painter, or any type of art. We, we encourage them all to come under our space so that we can interact with each other because we be believe that, um, that art and design is, you, you get inspired by other people collaborations, doing something with each other. We don't like it. We don't like that some designers are very hidden and they don't like to share or collaborate with other people. We believe that design is art and art is for everyone. We also repair and uh, restore a lot of jewelry. A lot of our clients come to us and say, oh, we have a lot of jewelry in our safe. We don't use it. We had it from when we were a baby. So this to us is, is the best type of jewelry. We encourage them to come, bring their pieces, so that we can redesign it into something wearable, something modernized, something for our, something for today. Okay. So being asked to give this lecture, we didn't realize how Arab influence was ingrained in our work. Uh, we, desi we design based on inspiration and the world we live in. And um, we don't believe that Arab culture is lost. On the contrary, if you compare it to the West, uh, we're still very attached to our traditions, and um, it's still deep-rooted within us. We value artisanal work, and that is, has existed for thousands of years. We're attached and proud of our culture. Having said that, on the other hand, everything is a click away. The internet, um, Instagram, things online. So this has made it a global, uh, a global world, and everything is a all cultures are a melting pot. 
into a melting pot. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go into our collections. Um, we're always inspired by Arabic traditions. Everything we do, it goes throughout our jewelry, uh, throughout everything we do, whether it's the materials we use like pearls or ferus or coral, or if it's uh, the, um, if it's charms that say a story or are used for uh, protection. And we always translate it into our jewelry, like here. It's all, we, every necklace that someone buys, for example, we always add a feiruz or add something for protection. Uh, we also use pomegranate, which is for uh, abundancy, uh, for, for fertility. Uh, we use anything that we feel is related to our culture, but we try to give it a modernized touch to it. Our line, which we love and is very close to our heart, uh, is Living Vintage. So Living Vintage, what we use is, the tech, is Felamank. Felamank is one of the oldest types of making jewelry. Um, uh, it's the oldest type of making jewelry, which has been used from ancient times in our region. So basically, the way that Felamank is done is the use of rose-cut diamonds, which are a style of stone cut cutting and produces a gem, which are unfaceted base. But forget about that. We're, I'm not going to go into the scientific term of what Felamang is. So basically, in olden times, we didn't have the machines that we have today to cut the diamonds from the base. So what they used to do is cut them from the top, which gives it the dome-like shape and the triangular facets. We also use 9 to 14 karat gold to, give, to keep this old, classic, traditional look of the jewelry. Now, if you see in the picture here, on the left hand, uh, the, there's the traditional Felamank jewelry, which is what you can find from olden times. But what we try to do is to take this and manipulate it into a modernized design that we can wear nowadays. Whether it's make it into a ring, a necklace, manipulate the type of bird. So it's just changing it and bringing it to our times. Again, we use the Feiruz throughout. We use uh, hilals. We like to stick to our traditions. We also use a lot of modernized, so the two things that we do is either we take them and we redesign the old models or we do our own models and uh, we use the same technique uh, and give it this old feel. Uh, for example, this is one of our first collections that we worked on, uh, which we're, we brought back now because of uh, the show Sultan, Harim al Sultan, exactly. We brought them back because we saw that a lot of people were asking for them. And, but what we did is we changed the way and we modernized it, making them into cuffs or different types of jewelry that we can wear nowadays. These are statement rings. These are the modernized type using the old technique, uh, which is the felamag, the rose cut diamonds, and the, giving that old age feel to it. Um, so again, we use Feiruz, we like to stick to, to our Arab traditions. Okay, uh, we also are very influenced by uh, the Arab, old Arab jewelry. So this is one of our lines, which is the Masibeh. We make them fashionable, wearable for nowadays. They have two functions. They can either be an, uh, a, a masbha where it's 33, 63, or 99, 66, or 99 uh, beads. Or at the same time, what we do is we always tend to put a charm, which is modernized at the bottom, and so that you can wear it every day, uh, something like this. You can wear it as a necklace, or you can actually wrap it around your hand. We also love hand pieces, uh, hand pieces which go back to ancient times. But what we've done is we've tried to modernize it, making it different and wearable for every day, using old, uh, the calf or feiruz, whether it's a horseshoe. So we try to make it uh, wearable for every day. This is the skull because it's a trend at the moment. So a lot of our a lot of our clients like something edgy. This is a bracelet basically was inspired by henna. Uh, henna alone is an art. It's beautiful on the body. It it's, it's just looks really nice. So we thought, how can we translate it? So we decided to do a hand piece uh, of, which looks like lace, and, and like lace and henna. And at the same time, since it's 
a trend right now wearing handpieces. We didn't. We want our jewelry to be wearable and timeless. So we decided at the same time make it as a bracelet and it can be a choker. So it's multi-purpose. This is another type of handpiece. We also do a lot of headpieces. Again, we like our jewelry to be multi-purpose, so it's a headpiece at the same time. It could be a necklace. We're also inspired by the pearls, by rubies, all these uh, gems that were used in olden times, and again, the technique that we use. Oops, sorry. Arabic calligraphy, also, we apply a lot of Ar Arabic calligraphy to our jewelry in order to capture the tradition and culture. This line is basically, it's, uh, it's always customized. We encourage our clients to come, whether it's a sentence or names, we put, put it together, uh, we design it, and then uh, we, we manipulate the design to whatever the client would like, whether it's a bracelet, a cuff, a ring, earrings. And actually, uh, the technique that I use in, 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 use in doing the Arabic calligraphy, it was taught by, I don't know if Raza Abedini is here today, but I learned a lot of techniques from him, and I still use them till today, of how to uh, manipulate the text into, into different things. Okay, this is our work in progress, which we're currently working on right now. I'm a graph originally a graphic designer, and uh, which I think is the basic for all art. You can do anything after you do graphic design. So I've always, I've always been inspired by Arabesque patterns. So we thought of how can we translate this into jewelry? How can we use it? So our patterns, uh, we took the diamond shapes, diamond shapes which are at the bottom. Those are the typical diamond facets. So I took it, I was like, this is a lot like Arabesque. What we, I did is manipulated it into a pattern which we use in our packaging. Um, and through that, we, the prototype, which, is, which are the top pictures, these are the prototypes of what we're doing right now. We, if you look at it, you can see it as either a diamond shape or it could be an arabesque pattern. It's up to, it's up to the eye. But the way we treat it, which I'm, I can't say what we're going to do because it's still a work in progress, will be very arabized in a way. Okay. And okay, uh, we have a, a video that we'd like to show, which explains our place and our, our concept more. Questions? No? Nothing. We'll just try to we'll try to get this to work. Okay. It's really slow. Internet isn't working, so it's connecting? <laughs> um, I just want to thank my sister. This is what a team means. I have stage fright. I can't help it, right? I'm trying my best, but how she took over, I forgot half my speech. So she really did a really good job by improvising. Um, <laughs> Maybe next time I'll get over it and be able to say my parts. Look how many cards I have, I promise. So.